lecture, I'm going to uh, introduce different characteristics and advantages and disadvantages of three important traditional numerical methods and different applications in uh, phys different physical problems. The first one is the finite difference method, the second one is the finite element, and the last one is the finite volume. These are the three well-known numerical methods. Two of them, especially the finite element and the finite volume, are very similar to each other. There are very important differences between these two methods, but um, researchers um, sometimes don't have enough information about um, the advantages of these two methods upon each other. Okay, so let's start from the final difference method. The name shows the strategy or the, the main paradigm behind the final difference. It means that we have different partial differential equations in uh, continuum mechanics or other uh, applications in physical sciences. So uh, we try to um, discretize this partial differential equation. It means that we have to uh, convert the partial differential equations uh, to um, algebraic equation, then we have an simultaneous algebraic equation and we can easily solve them, not easily sometimes, but we can solve them. So, and the main uh, paradigm behind the finite difference method is to convert the, uh, the derivative of a quantity into the finite difference or difference of the magnitude of that quantity at two points. So, uh, all of these uh, methods are mesh-based methods, deterministic methods, they are Eulerian methods, and uh, <clears throat> they are uh, based on the continuum equations, so uh, they are macro-scale computational methods. So this is the, strat the main strategy. The main disadvantage, uh, disadvantage of the finite difference method is the mapping process for non-aligned grids, uh, for, for curved boundaries, when you have a realistic geometry with complex curved boundaries, you have to uh, construct a numerical mapping process to uh, map this complex realistic uh, geometry in, into a, uh, a square or a, a rectangular domain. This is the physical domain, and that one is the map domain. After the solution of the equations uh, in that uh, numerical domain, you have to remap or inverse uh, map the result of the solution into the physical domain. This uh, process is time consuming and needs complex coding for complex boundaries uh, with non aligned uh, grids. Then again, the main concept of obtaining such relations um, between uh, finite differences and derivatives is the Taylor's theorem or Taylor series expansion. You can find backward, forward, central discretizations of the first order, the second order, or the high order derivatives with different truncation, uh, high order of truncation errors. Uh, and again, the, the other advantage of the fine difference is simple coding. For, uh, for straightforward geometries, and also lower computational costs in comparison to, to other uh, traditional numerical methods. The second one is the finite element method. Again, you can uh, pay attention to the name of the, the title, finite element. Uh, this means that in the finite element method, we are dealing with finite elements, but here we are working with finite volumes. Volume is a physical quantity, but element is a non-physical, um, imaginary uh, uh, part of body or continuum body. So the finite volume is a physical, has physical interpretations, but finite element has a mathematical nature. Let's start. Finite element uh, uses different finite elements and tries to find a relation between uh, the magnitude of unknown functions or dependent functions inside the element, uh, a relation between the magnitude in, inside the element and the grid points. Based on uh, the mathematical strategy behind the finite element is to integrate, uh, in, is to weighted, is to find the weighted integral form of the governing, governing equations. So you have to multiply 
both sides of the equation by test functions or uh, trial functions or shape functions and then integrate both sides with respect to uh, volume. So then uh, use the Green's first identity or the integration by part in one dimension to obtain the weak form of the solution and finally you have to minimize the residuals based on different uh, schemes. So, based on the weak form of the government equation, so the finite element is constructed based on the weak form of the solution, which is the beta integral form, and uh, uh, is and uses the green its first identity or the integration by part to reduce the order of the equation. Uh, it needs a shape function, trial function, or test functions. So the final results are beta average. Uh, inside elements. Uh, it's appropriate for arbitrary geometries. It's um, the most flexible method between the, these three traditional methods. Uh, where then you need to find uh, a scheme such as the collocation or subdomain or least square or the Galicid method to minimize the residuals. This minimization nature of the finite element method is, uh, is um, so appropriate for solid mechanics uh, sciences, uh, which um, usually deal with uh, minimization process, energy minimization in variational forms. So, uh, the finite element method is frequently used in structural uh, engineering or in solid mechanics, electrodynamic applications, and so on. Uh, the mathematical complexities behind the finite element method is more sophisticated, or is the mathematical uh, aspects is more uh, complex with respect to the finite volume method, and uh, is more appro appropriate for solid mechanics because it's based on minimizing residuals, something similar to the calculus of variations in solid mechanics, and uh, the, the disadvantage of the a finite element in comparison to the finite volume is the non-conservation characteristics of the finite element it means that uh, for uh, the fluxes between two elements are not conserved because you are obtaining the averaged form of an uh, integral integrated form of the equations. So um, uh, really, the equations are not conservative. And it uh, leads this uh, problem may lead to some stability and problems and discontinuities in results. Uh, and again, another advantage of the finite element method upon the finite volume method is that the finite element is easy to extend to higher orders. If you want to obtain higher order uh, numerical method, you have two choices. The first one is to refine mesh near uh, critical points in the domain, this is the mesh refinement or the edge version of the finite element method. This uh, approach can be used in all other numerical methods such as finite difference, finite volume and any other numerical method, mesh based method. But uh, in P version, you may uh, change the discretization process and obtain the higher version of the equation. This part is called the p-version of the finite element method, which uses higher order test functions. Because of the nature of the mathematical nature of the finite element, you can easily use high order test functions. For example, you may, for instance, you may use the first order uh, Lagrangian polynomials, or you can easily extend the order of the polynomial by using the second order Lagrangian polynomial. So, uh, it's easy to extend the high order of the discretization by using high order test functions. And uh, finally, the finite element method is the best choice for multi physics uh, problems. For, uh, this is the reason why the uh, multi physics solvers, commercial soft, uh, software such as the COMSOL software, use the finite element method uh, because it's more flexible uh, to solve different uh, governing equations uh, in different physics such as electrodynamics or fluid mechanics and 
also in uh, structural analysis. The third one is the finite volume method. Finite volume method is the sub is a subclass of the finite element method, method which uh, say a shape functions uh, equal to unity. It means that if you uh, integrate the governing equations without multiplying any uh, trial function, it means that uh, tri trial function or the test functions are uh, unity. So you are directly integrate the governing equations without multiplying any uh, weight function. So the result of the solution of the finite volume uh, or so the finite volume based numerical method are completely uh, physical, but weight functions uh, destroy the physical nature of the finite element methods. Okay, so this is the sub is a subclass of finite element with shape functions equal to one. You have to integrate the governing equation. So again, in these two uh, methods, we have we are using the integral form of the or the integrated form of the governing equation. So again, the uh, different quantities are average uh, are average over uh, volume. This time, not an element, are average uh, over uh, volume. So uh, the integral we are using the integral form, and after integrating, this time you have to use the divergence theorem or the ghost theorem to change the integral of divergence of a quantity over the volume, or to convert the volume integral of divergence of a quantity into the surface integral of flux of that quantity. This is the concept behind the divergence theorem. So, in the finite volume, we are, uh, instead of using the weak form and using the Green's first identity, this time we are using the ghost or the divergence theorem, and we change the volume integrals to a uh, surface integral of fluxes. So, the finite volume is the flux based uh, uh, in discretized form of the equation. Uh, so this is this uh, this type of dealing with the equation is more physical, and uh, it conserves the fluxes along uh, across uh, uh, the surface of uh, volume. Uh, so it can say that uh, surface uh, call of flux of mass or the flux of uh, momentum or the flux of energy, which leaves uh, one volume exactly is equal to the input flux of that quantity to the neighboring volume. This type of conservation uh, property uh, is not, uh, cannot be seen in the finite wall element method. It's again flexible for curve boundaries, similar to the finite element method. Uh, it uh, has simpler, uh, simple coding with respect to the finite element, but the most uh, simple coding process can be seen in the finite difference method. Lower computational time, again in comparison to finite element, the lowest computational time is for the finite difference, and then the finite volume, and finally the finite element. So if you want to, uh, to solve the turbulent flow equations, the best choice, if possible, is the finite difference method, because it has the lowest computational time. Simple coding, lower computational time, hard to increase the order of accuracy. Uh, as I told, I, I mentioned in the previous section, the finite element can be easily extended for to higher dimensions, but uh, uh, in finite volume, it's hard to decrease the order of accuracy of the discretization. And uh, totally or consequently, finally, the finite volume is more appropriate for the case of that the governing equations of the problem are conservation laws. But uh, the, this is a limitation for the the uh, finite volume method. So it, uh, this will lead to the use of or to, to uh, limit the use of the finite volume just for fluid mechanics applications such as shock waves, compressible flows, reactive flows, in which the equality of fluxes is a very critical point as is so essential. So uh, the finite volume is good when the governing equations are conservation laws, such as conservation of mass, momentum, energy, exergy, but have uh, shock waves or reactive flows, such complex applications need uh, a conservation numerical method like the finite volume method.